In this video, we're going to look at some trig function practice. So the first thing that we're going to practice is writing some trig functions. So the first one we're going to start with is a sine function. So the general form of a sine function is y equals the amplitude times the sine. And then inside of the sine, you have the b value, which impacts the peri period x minus your phase shift, which I'll call h. And then on the outside of the function, we have our vertical shift plus k. So let's go ahead and figure out these different letters. So our amplitude is our a. So we know that we have um, 4 going in for a. So we're going to have 4 times the sine of something. The B value is found with our period. So the B value is going to be the normal period of the function you're working with. So in this case, sine, which is 2 pi, divided by the actual period that of this function we're writing, so pi. So 2 pi divided by pi is 2, so our B value is 2. Then we have X minus H. H is our phase shift, so we're going to do X minus 1 half close both those parentheses, and then we add the face or the vertical shift on the outside, which we don't have a vertical shift. So then this function is y equals 4 times sine of 2, and then quantity x minus a half. And the phase shift, this will always be the opposite since we have a minus in our equation here. So now we're going to write a cosine function. So cosine function is the same thing, except for this time it'll be a cosine here. So we'll have a times cosine of b times the quantity x minus h, the phase shift, and then plus the vertical shift on the outside. So our a in this case, our amplitude is 3. And then cosine of, now we need to figure out our b value. The normal period of cosine is 2 pi divided by the, co the period of this function is 4 pi. So 2 pi divided by 4 pi is 1 half. So our B value is 1 half. Then X minus our phase shift of 2. And then we have our vertical shift on the outside of minus 1. So again, that phase shift looks opposite in the function. So phase shift is 2. So in the function says minus 2. Vertical shift stays the same. So this is minus 1 and minus 1. Next one, we're writing a tangent function. Again, same exact thing. So it's going to be a times tangent of b times x minus h plus k. Now, the thing that does change in this, so our amplitude is still on the outside, so 5 times the tangent function. But the thing that changes is how we find our B value because our normal period for tangent is pi, not 2 pi. So then it's going to be pi divided by 3 pi. The pi's will cancel, so we'll be at 1 third for our B value. And then we have X minus the phase shift, so X minus the negative 1 third, so that'll turn to plus 1 third and then plus our vertical shift of two. And then we'll write one more sine function. Um, so this is gonna be y equals the amplitude times sine, and we need our b value. So remember, b value equals two pi divided by pi over two. And so if we think about that as multiplying by the reciprocal of pi over 2, that's going to be times 2 over pi. Pi's will cancel, and we get 4 for our b value. And then x minus the phase shift, which is negative 2, so that will turn that to plus 2. And then our vertical shift is a plus 4. Next, we're going to practice graphing some trig functions here. Um, and so we're going to need to know these different features. Um, so our amplitude in this case is 2. Our period is 2 pi divided by the B value. So this is going to be 2 pi divided by 3. The phase shift, you need to be careful because we need to make sure that this is factored. 
So let's factor that three out. So th um, three X divided by three is just X. And then this will be pi divided by three. So our phase shift is pi divided by three. And then the vertical shift um, is anything added or subtracted on the outside, when, which in this case is none. So let's start by getting our um, starting axes on here. And so our starting midline is our vertical shift. So that's just at zero because it didn't move at all. Our phase shift moved us to pi over three. And we can see that this one is labeled pi over three. So we're gonna shift that Y axis or the starting axis over to pi over three. Then our amplitude is two. So it's gonna be up two from the midline and down two from the midline. And then our period helps us figure out how many boxes our key points or our critical points are happening at. So let's take a look at how many boxes equals two pi over three. So we see two pi over three here. So if we start at zero, that's one, two, three, four boxes equals our period. And then we always take and divide that into four parts for the unit circle. So every one box a min, middle, or max is going to happen. So every one box, starting at our phase shift, um, something critical will be happening. So if you want to put these little dashes all the way down, you can. Um, and now cosine starts at a maximum. So now we're going to be on this phase shift, and we're going to start at a maximum. Then it goes down to a middle one box later or a fourth of its period later and then a fourth of the period again it's at a minimum a fourth of the period will be back at the middle and then back at the max and then you can just follow that pattern backwards so it'll go middle min middle max middle min middle max switching between those every one fourth of a period and then you can just um, draw your curve in. Next one. Um, so this time, again, we have an amplitude of two. The amplitude's always positive. This negative um, will flip our function. So we'll deal with that in a bit. Um, and then the period, again, is 2 pi divided by the B value. In this case, our B value is 2. So our period is pi. Phase shift, again, we want to factor this 2 out. So we are going to take the 2 out. And when we divide a 2 out of here, okay, we end up with x minus, and then pi over 2 divided by 2 is pi over 4. So our phase shift is pi over four. And then the vertical shift, we have nothing on the outside, so there is no vertical shift. So when we start to graph this, our, our oscillating axis or our midline is still the x-axis because it hasn't been shifted up or down. Our phase shift is pi over four, which is half of pi over two. And then our amplitude again is at two, so two above the midline and two below the midline. Then we'll take and look at our period, which is pi, and pi is four boxes wide here. So I start at zero, count out to pi, that's four boxes, whoops. And then divide that by four means every one box, again, a key point is happening. So you can put those dashes. It's every one box. So just every box, something is going to happen. Um, sine starts at a middle. Okay, so sine is going to start at the midline. So sine here is at zero. Now, normally sine goes to a maximum. Okay, so normally sine goes like this, goes up and then back down. But since we have this negative here, it's going to go to a minimum next. 
So one box will be at a minimum, then it'll be back to a middle, max, middle, and remember every one box we're hitting one of those critical points because one box represents a fourth of the way through the period. So then just follow it backwards. So going to a max, middle, min, middle, max, middle, min, and then you can just um, connect your points. Make sure you do curves between these because sine is sine and cosine are not straight lines between those dots. Next one. Um, so we've got the amplitude again is two. Our period is going to be two pi divided by the B value, which in this case is pi. So 2 pi divided by pi is 2. Our phase shift, so again, we're going to factor this B value out. So factor the pi out. So pi x divided by pi is x. 2 pi divided by pi is 2. So our phase shift is negative 2 since this is a positive 2. And then vertical shift Again, we have nothing added outside, so we have no vertical shift. So then we'll go ahead and graph these. So we'll plot our midline, okay, which is still the x-axis. And then our phase shift is at negative 2, so we'll go over to negative 2. Amplitude is 2 above and below the midline again, so we'll go up 2 and down 2 from the midline. Then we'll figure out our period, okay, and in this case, two boxes equals two units, okay, so our period is two boxes, so when we divide by four, this means every one half of a box, we're hitting a min, middle, or max, so every half of a box this time. So now cosine starts at a maximum, so on this phase shift, we'll go up to the maximum, then half a box later will be at the middle, half a box later will be at the minimum, half a box later back to the middle, and half a box later back to the max. And we'll continue that pattern every half a box hitting a critical point till we fill up our graph. So then backwards we'd be at middle, min, middle, max, middle, and then you can connect your points with a curve. Next one, um, we have an amplitude of three this time. Again, the negative will flip it when we start to graph. Period, sine's normal period is two pi divided by the B value of pi gives us a period of two. Phase shift will factor out this pi, so we'll get x minus four. So the phase shift is positive four. And again, we have no vertical shift. So then we'll start plotting. So our midline is at zero. Our phase shift is at positive four. And our amplitude is three above and three below the midline. So up at three and down at negative three. And then we'll figure out our period is two. Again, that's two boxes. Divided by four gives us every one half box will be a critical value, just like the last one. Um, and then sine starts at a middle. So we'll be starting at the middle. Now half a box later, instead of sine being at its max, it's gonna be at its min since we had the negative here to flip it, okay? And then backwards, normally sine would go to a min, but it's gonna go to a max. Then back to middle, half a box later, min, middle, max, middle, min. And we'll just continue this pattern until we fill up our graph and then you can connect the points.
Next one gives us an amplitude of four. The period for cosine is normally two pi, and this time we'll be dividing by a B value of one half. So two pi divided by one half is four pi. Our phase shift, we're gonna um, factor out that one half. So I'm just gonna do that over here. Um, so take a half out and then negative pi divided by a half is negative two pi. So our phase shift is two pi. And again, our vertical shift is none. We have nothing added or subtracted outside of the function. So we'll start graphing. Midline stays at zero. Phase shift this time is at two pi. Amplitude is four. So we'll go four above our midline and four below our midline. And then we'll take a look at the period um, to figure out how many boxes we need for our critical points. Um, and so four pi, so we need to count. So it only goes up to really like two pi. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight boxes. So four pi is actually 16 boxes. Divided by four means every four boxes, um, one of our critical points happens. So I'm going to just start counting that from this midline. So then one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, um, and then get those so I can see them happening. Then cosine normally starts at a maximum, but now with this negative, it's going to start at a minimum. So on this purple line, we're going to be all the way down here at its minimum. Okay, and then I don't have anywhere really to go this way. So I'm gonna go back to the middle here and then max, middle, min. And that'll help me and I can kind of draw the curve there, um, but that'll get me my cycle there filling up the graph for that function. And then the last one has an amplitude of two. Um, and then a period of two pi divided by one half. So our B value is one half in there. So that's going to be four pi. Phase shift will factor out that one half. I'll do it off to the side here. So X over two take out a half is just X. Three pi over two take out that one half is just going to be three pi. So our phase shift is negative three pi. And again, no vertical shift. So we'll go to graph this and our midline stays at zero. Our phase shift goes to negative three pi this time. Our amplitude is at two, so two above the midline and two below the midline. And then our period is four pi which is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight boxes. So eight boxes equals our period divided by four gives us every two boxes, one of those critical points will happen. So I'm gonna count that from this phase shift. I'm just gonna do a dash every two boxes to remind myself when a point, when a critical point will happen. Sign starts at its middle. So right here, we'll start at the middle then sign goes to a maximum, back to a middle, down to a min. Remember every two boxes, this is happening on this graph. And then if I go backwards, it would go down to a min. So once you get them all filled in, then you can draw in your curves.